I do what we're going to do. I have some other team just came up with a counter and said, we got a counter for a meet and greet today. We'll see how it goes. Holy cow, I'll just sit right now. And I'm not that's amazing. Good morning, everybody. How you doing this morning? I'm not used to getting so much response right at the beginning. I'm looking out. I'm not my age right now. Good morning. I'm glad you're here. I'm Pastor Light. If it's your first time here, thank you for joining us. We are so, so glad that you're here. I want to make sure that everybody got an experience guide. So if you did not get a guide, ushers have them. They'll be more than happy to bring that to you. Listen to me. If you don't normally get a guide, you're going to want to grab a guide today. Because there's something special in there, not normally in there, that I'm going to go through that you might want to look at. So... If you didn't get a guide, um, and you might want to grab one now, otherwise you're going to be looking on your neighbor's uh, paper at one point during the teaching tonight. So grab one of those. They're happy to bring this to you. Glad you are here. Let me say what I normally say the first time. Give us two things. One, bathrooms are really, really important, right? So women's is over here, men, and they're right here in the auditorium. So don't go out looking down the hallway. They're right here. And then the other is people always ask uh, on their first time here, because we don't pass a bucket or offering plates or anything like that. Uh, so they ask, well, what's the deal with that? We have boxes in the back of the room. So that's where people put their tithes, their offerings, and all that. I just want you to know that if it's your first time here, please do not feel compelled to give. We're just glad you're here. I just wanted you to have that little bit of information. Speaking of giving, man, I love our church. Man, I love our church. You guys, you guys give, and I'm going to talk to you about giving today on some things and some numbers that you're going to see that are just going to blow your mind. Um, you guys know our church has been blessed enough. Uh, to give away over $700,000 in four years um, because of the way we do church and the way we do ministry. That's why we're here. But I heard a story this week. I want to talk to you about giving a little bit. One of our small groups uh, found out about a family, and apparently this family is a mom with, if I'm not mistaken, they said nine kids. Nine kids. And, um, and she ran from an abusive situation to here. And our small group basically adopted this family and all of the kids are getting good for Christmas, like computers and scooters and all this kind of crazy stuff. So, man, I just, it came up my heart to hear, I don't know anything about this. And I thought, man, that's the heart of this church. I am so, so grateful that God continues to put it on your heart um, to give and serve in the way that we do. And, again, I'm going to tell you more, more about that. But um, that kind of stuff gets you chunked up. That's what it's all about, right? Come on, man. There are no U-Hauls behind the hearse. Come on, somebody. Right, you ain't taking nothing with you, right? We might as well use it for God's uh, glory here, right? And see the riches in heaven. That's the whole point. But a couple quick announcements I want to tell you. Um, one is, of course, the block party is coming up on December 11th. If you haven't registered, we need more people to register for that. If you don't understand what that is, is it's an effort for us right here at the high school to have a place where people can come and find out about services. If they're homeless, if they need a job, if they need food, if they're struggling, if there's ever a time of the year where people are dealing with and struggling with that. But here's the cool thing. We are combining with all of the people who already do services in the area. So we're not trying to recreate the wheel here. That's not the point. Right? We have gone to Bill Jones over at the Christian Care Center and said, Bill, you guys do an unbelievable. Let me just say something. If you guys have never been over to the Christian Care Center and been on a tour, it's worth taking a day off to go do. Can I just tell you that? They're killing it. And I give all honor to uh, Charles Rosell, who was the pastor there for 25 years, and he's the one that made that happen. So, Pastor Charles, a lot of y'all know this. When we were launching the church, I picked four men that I knew had been years of ministers in this area. And Charles Rosell was one. And I went to them and I had dinner. I bought each of them dinner. And I said, I'm about to launch a church. So, from my perspective, I'm about to take the baton from you as a church father of this community. Tell me what hasn't been finished. Tell me what's missing. Tell me what this community needs. And Charles Rosell is one of those people that spoke into my life and ultimately into you by speaking into the beginning of this church. But he was the man that made that ministry village happen and raised all the funds and all that sort of stuff. And it is awesome what they do over there. Well, they're partnering with us and other local groups for us to say, you know what, there are some people that will never step on on a church campus. Let's not call out any particular church. They're just not going to go to a church campus. You, you know what I'm saying? Because it's just it's church. And they feel weird or whatever. Well, this is going to be in the stadium right here, at least for high school. But it's going to point them to the services and the things that are available in their community. So come out that day. Get on our website. There's more information about it. I promise you it's something very, very worth uh, spending your time. A couple other. One is Christmas Eve is coming. Looking forward to Christmas Eve service, service we're calling it, and light of hope. Let me hear it here this church. I looked at the team and said, why are we doing Christmas Eve service? Like, this is just one of those services where, you know, mom wants everybody to dress up. Come on, and she drags all the males, 
along. Don't lie. You know what I'm talking about. Right? And, and then we go to Christmas service and we sing some car- carols and we hold, you know, candles and try not to burn the ladies here in front of us. And, but why? And I looked at our team and I said, why? Like, why do we do a Christmas Eve service? I don't want to just do tradition. Uh, one of the things you'll learn very quickly about church lunch, we're very intentional. Uh, we're not interested in wasting your time or your resources without some kind of a why we're doing it. And what our team came up with was, what's our community need? We need hope. So we're calling it a night of hope. And that night we're working on several testimonies that will be given by video. Uh, we have an opportunity. Our kids are going to participate and do the Christmas story uh, for us at the beginning. So I think you're going to find there's a lot more why to it than just the Christmas Eve service. Does that make sense? So I tell you all that because I'm hoping to motivate you that it would be worth inviting someone to come and try. Speaking of which, those kids that are involved with our parents, um, uh, Miss Savannah would like to have a practice and a time together right after service. So if your kids are involved, if you can come meet up with her right after service here, that would be fantastic. So Christmas Eve, join us at 6.30 right here. And then um, I've never made this announcement before, so this is a, I don't know if this is like a new step for Church of Lakes or whatever, but I don't know if you've looked around lately, but the seats are getting kind of filled up, y'all. Right? So I just want to tell you of something that you may not have ever thought about before. There's a balcony. Now, that was not a place for the teenagers to go. You hear me? All right. But, no, but in all seriousness, actually, the balcony has been used several times over the last few weeks, and it stirred my thinking to say, there may be some people, you know, one of the ladies used it was she was not feeling so well. And she was concerned about, like, getting other people sick or whatever. She wasn't positive. Don't worry about that as far as COVID. But she just said, you know what, because I'm not feeling well, I'm going to go up in the balcony and stay away from people. Um, or if you've got your kid with you, your kid's just having one of those days, come on, Mom. You, like, you try everything, and it's chaos and whatever. And you want to go up there because you're feeling more comfortable instead of getting right around people. So if you come in and you want to use the balcony, what you have to do is you have to go past the doors coming in here, and there are stairs that go up and come to the balcony. So I just want you to know it's there. Um, as we grow, I have a feeling I'm going to be, like, talking to the people up in the cheap seats, cheap seats just as much as uh, anybody else, right? So uh, we were excited about the, the growth that's happening. We are uh, in a series right now, and, and once a year, we dedicate a, a series in this time of year to one of our values, to one of the values uh, that, that makes Church of the Lakes, Church of the Lakes, to one of our values that I think, honestly, it's not just a Church of the Lakes value, I think it's a biblical value. And it, and, it, and it starts with, it's, it's the fourth of our values, but the first one it starts with, we want every person, every man, woman, and child to have, to have an opportunity to know God. Right? To, to have a relationship, a, a real relationship, a personal relationship, not knowledge of God, because many of us grew up with a knowledge of God. Many of us as kids, and I think of the reason that the majority of kids, still the statistic, the majority of kids that grow up in church don't go back to church after they leave. And I think the reason is, is because they don't know God. They know someone who knows God. Are you following me? In other words, it's their parents' belief, and they grow up in it, when it's not theirs. Or they have a youth leader. Are you following me? That their youth leader knows God, but it's not theirs, or their pastor, or whatever. So our desire, our hope, whether it's young or old, is that you would come to know God. And then once you know God, that you would find freedom. Right? Find freedom. Because uh, we all got stuff. Anybody here that doesn't have stuff? Anybody perfect? Anybody? No? Good. All right. And I don't know why I have my hand up, because I'm not either. Right? We, we all have stuff, so we want you to find freedom. And we do that, honestly, through small groups. And we talked about that small group earlier, uh, doing what they do. I can, I can tell you, I know they're more blessed than probably not any of them. Right? But that was through small groups. And we do that where we get in each other's lives. And there's accountability. Anybody know that we need accountability? Anybody brave enough to say, yes, I need accountability? Anybody? Of course you do. It's not a danger for you to be by yourself. Come on, we've all seen it on National Geographic. What happens when one gets away from the herd? Yeah, they get eaten, right? And, and that's exactly what happens when, when we get alone with our thoughts and our ways and our ideas, it gets really, really dangerous. And so you know God, you find freedom, and then you'll begin to discover purpose. And there's purpose, and there's meaning, and how do we do that? We do that through life steps. Some of you have not been through life steps. You hear me talk about it every week. 
maybe you've been kind of curious, or maybe you're like, I don't know if I want to stay. You know, I like being the Baptist in Oakwood, or whatever it is that you got so important to do at the church, right? But 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 listen, but listen to me. Stay, stay, and come through life steps with us because we want to take you on a spiritual journey. We want to walk you through this to make sure you know God. Did you understand how to find freedom? But then you will begin to discover purpose. And then what this series is all about, that your life would make a difference. Anybody want to make a difference? Anybody want there to be something significant about your life? That's what we're talking about when we talk about legacy. Right? What, what, is, what, is, what is legacy? What does that look like? Well, we've been reading Psalm 112 each week. I want to read it to you again. It says this. Good will come to him who is generous and lends freely who conducts his affairs with justice. Surely he will never be shaken. I've said it every week. I'll say it again. That's why you're telling me my life did not be shaken. That's exactly what I'm telling you. Well, obviously, that's kind of crazy. Now I'm telling you this. When you are connected to the rock, when you are connected to the creator of the universe, when you are so solid in who he is and who you are in his life, everything around you can be shaken, and you will not be shaken. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? Right, that's, that's exactly what that means. And then it goes on and it says, a righteous man will be remembered forever. That's awesome. That's awesome. So think about that. Right? Like, you say to me this way. What we do for ourselves dies with us. I believe what we do for others lives forever. Right? What we do for ourselves dies with us. But what we do for others will live forever. Let, let me start by giving you an update of where we are. Like, where, where we are as a church. Because I, I, I think if we're going to deal with our self, selfishness, anybody here selfish? Anybody? All of us are selfish. We get up in the morning and our first thought is us. Like, you know, I don't, I, I don't, I, I'm worried about my hair, my breath, and my, right? And we're worried about going out. I mean, come on. Like, we're constantly consumed with how we look. Or how people will read us, or how they will take it. Man, we're in the we're in the culture of branding, right? We brand ourselves, young people, right? Got to make sure that Instagram looks good. You got to make make sure I do the right snap so everybody thinks I'm cool, and right? I mean, that that we're in this world that is, and, and if we're going to deal with our selfish nature, then I think we got to got to understand that we're going to have to keep ourselves motivated to keep doing the work that God has called us to do. Does that make sense? Why do we get distracted because of selfishness from doing what God has called us to do? Well, we're going to have to constantly go back to what is the work he's called us to do. And why do we remember? I think that's why God gave us a Sabbath. I think that's why he says, keep Sabbath. That's why we do Sunday. It's, it's for us to get to the end of the week and walk away from work and responsibilities and all that stuff. And not long enough to go, what went well this week? What was not so godly this week? God, will you forgive me? God, what are you calling me to do next week? Like he wants us to take time to stop and remember and to think because we've got to deal with our selfish nature. It's why Jesus looks at, him, at, at us still today and says, do this in remembrance of me. Why do we do communion on the first of the month? It's a reminder. We, we, we need a reminder of why that we suck oxygen on this blue block. Come on, somebody. It, it's, it's not an accident. You, 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 <laughs> your uncle is not a monkey. I mean, you might know, look like a monkey, but you understand what I'm saying? You didn't evolve, is what I'm getting at. Right? But listen to me, you were created on purpose, with meaning, and you were created to make a difference. And so I want to look real quick and just quickly give you kind of a legacy report for Church of the Lakes and remind you who we are and why we're doing what we're doing and what God has called us to do and how important it is for us to make sure that we're dealing with our selfish nature while staying focused on the work, right, that God has called us to do. So when I was thinking about what God has done this year, <laughs> Psalm 65, the Lord, you crowned a year with battle for harvest. Man has God given us some amazing opportunities this year. Man has God allowed us to do some absolutely amazing things. I'm, I'm going to talk a little bit about them. And it says, even the hard paths overflow with abundance. You know, I, I look at, like, a, a couple giving us, come on, y'all, giving us a building to do a team say. You know, when you, when you look at what should be hard paths, 
I said it before, where are you sitting right now? I'm in church. Under the auspices of a country who's going away from church and separation of church and state, you're sitting in a public school at a church this morning. I took to stop and remember what God is doing. I say it to my staff all the time. I may say it too, too much for them to lose their all, but I say it to them every week. Don't lose your all. Don't lose your all. Like, can you imagine what it must have been like to be the Israelites with the parting of the Red Sea? You're walking across dry ground and there's walls. Can you imagine that walk? Like the whole time they're walking through it, they're just looking at the water, and one moment it's like, is it coming down? Um, you know, or, or can you see fish? Like, did you fish? To, did you reach through the water and grab something? You ever thought about that kind of stuff? My brain goes all kinds of crazy places. But here's what I want to say to your church. Don't lose the fact that you are the Israelites. Right now, walking on dry ground, past the big walls of water, as God continues to open up opportunity, after opportunity, after opportunity, for us to make a difference, for us to, to, to be, do something that is significant for his kingdom in this place. So pull this out. It's in your guide. This is what I wanted you to look at today. This is, this is a legacy report. I just want to talk about this for a couple of minutes. I'm going to get into God's word in, in just a minute. But I, I want to talk to you about this really quick and just talk legacy report. Um, what we've listed here, Lizzie did an amazing job putting this together for you. These are just numbers. For those of you who are interested, how many salvations, how many baptisms, what is average attendance? It's funny because on here it says the average attendance is 208. And that's for the whole year. For the last few weeks, it's been in the 350, 325 range. Right? But listen, listen, listen. The only reason we get excited about numbers, because some people say, well, is that what it's all about? It's just all about numbers. It absolutely is about numbers. Because every one of those numbers is a soul. Come on, somebody. Like, it matters. Because until we get done with this project, hell is very real. Right? And it's our job to make sure that we steal as many souls from hell as absolutely possible. Right? That's, that's the goal. That's why we do what we do. That's why we don't do church for others. That's why we don't do church in our way and well, the way we like it in the comfort. We're trying to do church in a way where anybody would come in and walk out the street who is unchurched and go, hmm, okay, kind of different. Maybe I'll listen. That's the whole reason we do church the way we do it. Uh, I've said it to people and some people think I'm kind of crazy and they don't really believe me. There are parts of the way that we do church that I don't care for. I grew up in the Episcopal Church. I love the old awe and reverence. Come on, somebody, stained glass. Come on, kind of that awe for God kind of thing. But you know what? In, this, in today's age, you have somebody walk into that kind of, and it just feels spooky. It looks like a horror movie. Let's be real with the culture and where they are. You hear what I'm saying to you? So we don't do church for us. We do church for you to reach people and do that. I could just really quick, man, the, the, the number of kids, small groups is there, missions. Look at local missions, $172,000 this year. In local missions given locally uh, to our community to serve the community. So all those numbers are there. Turn the page. Global's there. It shows you what we've given away globally. I'm going to talk more about that. And for those of you who are curious, if you haven't been through Life Steps, by the way, if you've been through Life Steps, you'll get to hear this more in detail. Uh, so come to Life Steps starting on the first next month, right? So, but, but right here it shows you how we do missions. We want you to understand exactly how we do missions, how we divide that up, how it's given away, and its percentages. I love it that we do percentages because here's what happens. Our missionary relationships, and we know them all personally, our missionary relationships are constantly praying for you. You know why? Because the more money that's given in the church, the more of a percentage the giving goes to their ministry. Are right? you know what I'm saying to you? Like, I love that part that they like call me and go, holy cow, man, did y'all have some growth? Because I got this check this, uh, this quarter. And, and so y'all must have had some great giving or some great growth. As we grow, he grows with it. So that's there. I'm going to skip past these letters and I, we'll talk about these in just a second. I just want to tell you what else in this thing. For those of you to know how to give, there's all kinds of crazy ways to give, including our newest way to give, my cash app. All of us old people are like, sure, whatever. Um, Right, because there's young people that brought that to me and said, Pastor Mike, we need to set up cash apps. So cool, you got cash app, it's set up, it's there, text giving, all that kind of stuff. And then on the back, we actually have the, a, a relationship with a group that we can take, whether it be land, stocks, something like we can we can convert that stuff, we can do that kind of So I just want you to know, like, all this is here put together for you to understand. Now, when you start talking about money, 
People cringe. Come on. I talked to a lady yesterday, and she found out I was a pastor. And she said, what are you talking about tomorrow? She said, I'll play the ball court. And I started laughing out loud. I mean, I, I literally quit. <laughs> okay, yeah. And she said, no, well, you're only going to be talking about tomorrow. I said, tomorrow I'm talking about money. And she went, oh, okay. Right? I thought, well, honestly, I, I looked at that and thought, that really is where we've come as a church where, and, and as a people. We've gotten so caught up with this, this, this money thing, this struggle, but it, man, it's something that, that touches a core. It's something inside of us that, that, that is so, so base in, in, in who we are. Um, and it's such a, a thing that we hold on to. And I think it's important here. Jesus talked more about money than he did love. You know why? Because I think he thought when you're holding on to your money, you can't love. We have a control and, and you have it surrendered in that. So I want to hear you. I want you to hear something. This is the one time of the year that we talk about money. And, and I used to cringe talking about money. I have shared that with people, talking about this whole idea of, 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 of trying to talk to people about money. And I used to be like, oh, they're going to feel weird and all this kind of stuff. I think it's okay for us to feel a little weird. I think it's okay for us to feel uncomfortable. Because here's the question. Wherever you put your money, there your heart is, is what the Bible says. Right? And so at some point, we've got to stop and say, well, what am I doing? And here's what I would say to you this morning, is, is, is if you're going to make a difference in this world, it will start when you become open-handed with the resources that God has given you. When you get to the point where you say, God, what are you doing? What do you want me to do with this? And how do I best glorify you with what you have given me? And so we put this together. Now, what we're doing is, every year we do something called a legacy offering. The reason we're talking about money is because next week is our annual legacy offering. Okay, cool. So if you're first time here, you're probably thinking right now, okay, so what are they building? Or what new Harley does the pastor want? Come on, let me just go there right now with where your brain might go. And be very real. So here's what I would say to you. We don't take a legacy offering for anything for Church of the Lakes. We take a legacy offering and it's all going out. What we've done is we have prayed and asked God and vetted groups or ideas or thoughts that we thought this is the best way for us to reach out to the community. So all the money that's given for a legacy offering goes out. Right? It is an opportunity. It goes back to something God said to us at the very beginning of launching this church. And that is, wonder precedes the word. Wonder precedes the word. When you make people go, why are you doing that? Well, I don't understand. Like, why would y'all, y'all are meeting in the school and you're sitting up every day, but you guys are giving away $700,000. Like, why haven't you, like, built a building or, or done something like that? And we go, well, you know what? Let me tell you about God. Who gave Jesus above and beyond for me and sacrificed his son and Jesus left to heaven? Uh, in that glorious place to come to this crazy, jacked up place to die for us. Wonder receives the word. Wonder gives the opportunity for us to tell who God is and to tell his story. And so we will do, listen to me, we understandably we will do anything short of sin to win somebody far from God. Come on. Anything short of sin to win somebody to God. And so we do that in that way. So let me tell you about the legacy offering real quick. It's going to happen next week. And I want to get on with God's word, talking about legacy and all that we're called to do. But it's important for you to understand how this ties in to who we are. So we have five legacy lanes. Five legacy lanes that you know, we call them. And the reason is, is because not everybody gets excited about the same thing. And so we don't beg, we don't ask, here's what I'm going to tell you to do. You pray, ask God to tell you what to do, and you be obedient. Right? That's, that's all we ask, is, is that you would consider what it is that God would tell you to do. So, we do have a place where people will give to a general fund, where they'll say, you know what, anything that, of those projects where you need extra money, I'm just going to put it in the general fund and you can do that. Okay? That, that's by itself. The first lane that we have is actually not even on here, and the reason is, is because we've done so much in that lane this year, we didn't put it in the legacy offering. That lane is what I would call Church of the Lakes expansion. It's about us expanding. Well, we have expanded so much this year, we added several different things. We added a way building, right? A worship and, art, a worship and, 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 and youth building. And so our way building is a place where now our youth meet. They have a place to meet every week. 
So groups are meeting there. We, we've expanded to having a new building that we rent that's over across from the high school, just across the street, right over here. We also expanded in our Thrive Center. So we've got our team center, and uh, I'm really excited to show you uh, some pictures. Because here's what, what we've had the opportunity to do is the new building went in yesterday. Let me show you some pictures of the new building that was going in yesterday. So this is a modular building, portable, that is going in. Why are we putting this building up? Because a couple came and said, we'd like to do an entire martial arts program for free for all the kids and for all the neighborhood. We'll buy the mats, we'll buy the outfits, we'll buy the gear. All the stuff is sitting there and waiting. And so we put this in, and hey, listen to me, cash. Are you hearing me? Hey, cash, no debt, we don't do debt or anything like that. So because of your giving and because of what you do, we've already done this in these particular areas. So this is, this is in that area. But let me talk to you about these other four. First of all, next generation. Next generation is a focus that we have. It's why we're in the high school. It's what God's called us to do. Because we've got to, let me say it this way. Easier to build a boy than it is to fix a man. Look at my CD for a second. Right? Easier to build a boy than it is to fix a man all day long. So we focus on the next generation. So here's that giving link. It's summer camp scholarships. It's the opportunity for us to take teams from our team center and our youth and go to summer camp at Camp Anderson where there's a connection to the foster kid system. Foster kids go there. Uh, we have the opportunity to sponsor foster kids. Our kids get a chance to love on them and be a part of that scenario. So summer kid scholarship is one of the lanes that we say, hey, if I put it on your heart, then would you consider it up in your area? But we have a local. Local missions. We want to focus. The, uh, uh, Acts 1 and 8, it says this. It says that you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, which is the city they were in, in Judea, which is the surrounding area, and, and, and to the ends of the earth. So Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. That's why the scripture tells them to be. So we look at it and we go, okay, well, we have local missions, we have regional missions, and we have global missions. This is the way we do. So locally, we focus on what it is that God's calling us to do. When we talk about local, I'm really excited about these. One, we've got a project with the Leesburg Police Department. She came to me and, and actually sent me a message and said, I need to talk to you, which is usually heavy. So I showed up in his office, and he's sitting there, and he said, Mike, um, I've been struggling with how do we deal with the mental health issues of our first responders? And come on, you guys know, there's all kinds of projects, Back the Blue, and we do dinners, and we grab stuff, and we see stuff. But come on, y'all, how many of you know that that lasts for a few minutes, and then they're back in their patrol car? And they're back dealing with the stuff that they are doing. So he came to me and said, I need your help. We need to raise a significant amount of money. I have found a program. It's an app that will go on their phones. What the app does is it allows them, they can take some self-assessment tests, and it'll say, it looks like you're beginning stages of depression. It looks like you're dealing with PTSD. It looks like you might be, and he gives them resources and phone numbers and all kinds of different things. Right there in the privacy of their car, because what you don't know about police officers is they're pretty guarded. Because of what they go through, they're very, very guarded. It's taken me two and a half years to get into the hearts of several of them that they would open up to me and feel safe. Right? So it's a joke, but it's very real in the police department. How do you deal with your stuff? I push it down and drink it away. Which is why alcoholism is such an issue and divorce is such an issue, right? Because I'm going to stop and have a couple to calm down on the way home, but eventually the couple becomes more, and then when I get home, she's mad. Is it, are you tracking the pro problem with me, right? And so this project is something that it's not just a back the blue event. It's the opportunity for us to put something in their hands that they can deal with in the privacy of their car or the privacy of their home and deal with the mental health issues that they have. I am so excited about this opportunity. Because this, this is residual in its return for years to come. Does that make sense? The next local project is here at Leesburg High School, and it's the Leesburg High School scoreboard. Now, when they first told me scoreboard, there was a part of, like, if I'm honest, I was kind of like, let's kind of feel this, like, you really have to have a scoreboard? Is that more of a want? Like, what kind of scoreboard are you talking about? And I was really kind of cynical at first until what they said to me, the, 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 the scoreboard has advertising opportunities on the scoreboard. So once we put the scoreboard up, there is residual income for the school and the athletic department for years to come because of that whole project. Does that, does that make sense? So there's two things we're doing. One is for the police department, I'm working on talking to the Hog chapter 
uh, at Arlington has a ride that will be a major event for us to support that. And then also, we're talking about a concert here with Dave Boyer and a swing band. Come along with our, our seniors, small seniors. Right there, we have a night of gospel and swing and kind of Tony Bennett old school music. They're going to do two nights of concerts here to raise this fund. So those are things that we're going to have projects, but I want you to pray about this. And God puts on your heart to consider that. Two more, and then I'm going to move. Regional care for pastors. This is the one that's closest to my heart, if I'm really honest with you. It's because most of you may not realize there are a lot of pastors out there that will be spending this Christmas having just gotten kicked out of a job. Having just gotten out of a deacon board chased them off. Or a disagreement in a church becomes something that's a split, and now they're the casualty of that scenario. Care for Pastors is a group that works for them. They're giving us a list of names right now. We're going to send a check to each of those pastors and their family for Christmas. You are not allowed to spend the ministry. This is not for ministry. This is for you to spend on your family. Know that you are loved, and we appreciate your part in the kingdom. We got the opportunity last year to do six pastors' families, and it was one of the most rewarding things I've ever been a part of to love and serve them in that process. So our goal is, as much as God puts it on your heart to give, we're going to get send out $500 checks to as many pastors as we can find that we can encourage and hopefully encourage them to get right back into ministry and serving in God's kingdom. And then the last one you already know about, and that is DriveBots. And if you don't know about DriveBots, uh, that is a huge project, and you can talk to them on the way out because they're all set up in their, in their project. So this is our legacy offer. And, and I listen to the church. I understand that we take that much time of our Sunday gathering to show this to you because I think it is absolutely critical that we understand there's something more than us just showing up to church on Sunday morning. It's we're here to make a difference. We're here to leave a legacy. And so you would say, well, let me say it this way. All that to say, none of us are as good by ourselves as we are all together. Right? None of us are as good by ourselves as we are all together. So let me tell you three things for you to do in this process. Number one is pray. Please pray for our church. Please pray for um, the, the vision. Pray for Christmas Eve. Pray for the Thrive Center. Pray for these particular legacy lanes um, that God has put on our heart. Ask God to bless these projects and relationships uh, that we have developed. Matthew 9 and 37. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, come on, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into the harvest field. Number two, we ask you, give. Give whatever it is that God puts on your heart to give. We don't tell you what you should do. We just want you to ask God to ask what to do. Look at Proverbs 30 and 27. Do not withhold good from those who deserve it when it's in your power to help them. If you can help your neighbor now, don't say come back tomorrow, and then I'll help you. The only offering that we promote all year long is this legacy offering. And listen to me. The Lord willing and the creek don't rise, we're going to write checks for thousands of dollars. Somebody come on and make a difference in our community and serve people that we believe in need. And we're going to get to the seat return on that, I believe, for years to come. The last one, uh, pray, give, the third one is go. Go. What do I mean by go? I want you to have the mentality of this. Come to church, then go to your mission field. Come to church, then go to your mission field. Did you know you're a missionary? Maybe you didn't even hear me. Did you know you're a missionary? Like that's what you're called to do. God put you in the sphere of influence for you to serve other people. Romans 10 and 15. And how can anyone preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those feet because they go, because they're moving. The feet of those who bring good news. Right? So here's what we've done this morning. Out there, there's some cards for you. We call them rat cards, random acts of kindness cards. Let me encourage you to pick up, um, so pick up a six pack, okay? This is a six pack, there's six of them in here. Um, and, 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 and pick up one of these scenarios, and all it is is a little card for when you go today and you go eat and you serve and then the waitress serves you, then you leave one of these cards and then leave them a honking tip. Right? Or if you're short on time today and you run through the drive thru awesome. Then pay for the card behind you and ask the person in the drive thru to give them this card and say, we paid for your lunch today and serve you. For the next several weeks, listen to me, when you go out there and go shopping, ladies, 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 be kind. People are crazy. Did anybody go shopping on Black Friday? Where are my crazy people? There you are. Okay. 
All of you, listen. Listen, listen, listen. There is no, there is no season like this crack season to do something to serve someone who loves someone. So for it to make a difference. So grab some cards and go. Go be who God has called you to be. So let me finish with this. Here's where we get into a little scripture real quick. And, and thank you for letting me take that long. But I want to talk to you. Let me finish up with how do you live a legacy life? How do you live a life that is all about legacy? Number one, I think it's this. It takes faith. It takes faith. Listen, not just belief. I believe in God. What does that mean? It takes vision. Right? So the substance of something that you are hoping for, that's faith. The certainty of things yet unseen, that's vision. That's the opportunity to do that. In other words, I see it another way. I see it differently than it currently is. Legacy people, we see it. We see it. I see Leesburg High School with a waiting list. And there's a whole bunch of me going out. Okay. I see it. I see it. I see a city with thriving businesses and low crime. I see a city where property values have skyrocketed. I see the retirees and seniors of our area investing in the next generation like nothing ever seen before. I see a church, the big C, that is thriving and bringing real transformation in individuals and families. Amen? Let me read it this way. This has been done a million times. My previous pastor, Pastor Terry's brother, he did this. A bunch of other pastors have done it. But I adapted something that, that we used to have at, at our other church and many other churches. So nothing new about this, but I just adapted some of the words. I just want to give you a vision of what I see. I see a church. So attractive and so refreshing that the buildings struggle to contain the increase. I see a church where people have found a relationship with God instead of a religion. Where living for God is no longer an obligation, it is a heartfelt desire. I see a church where people are continually taking steps in their spiritual journey with the goal of reaching new heights in every part of their lives. I see a church full of people who are growing in God and discovering that God wants to use them to make a difference. Where every person is experiencing the kind of fulfillment that only God can give. I see a church where God uses ordinary people, dream teamers, small group leaders, and a church staff serving the people of our city so that they in turn would open their hearts to God. I see a church so compassionate that people are drawn from impossible situations into a loving and friendly circle of hope where answers are found and acceptance is given. I see a church that, that, that is committed to raising, training, and empowering a leadership generation of young people who will go from this place and change the world. Come on, somebody. I see a church who never stops searching for lost people because God never stops searching for us. I see a people so kingdom-minded they will count whatever the cost and pay whatever the price to see revival sweep this great nation. The church that I see realizes that none of this can happen on their own ability. Instead, they're a church that is committed to prayer, fasting, and dependency upon the Holy Spirit. I see a church where Jesus is famous and all the glory goes to him. Anybody else? Come on, church. You've got to have a vision, but it takes faith to live, leave this legacy life. You've got to see something different. Look at Ephesians 2 and 19. This is what it says. God is building a home. He's using us all, irrespective of how we got here. You know what that means? I think that is, it don't matter how big or loser you are. All right? I love that. Aren't you grateful for that? Come on. In what he is building, he uses the apostles and the prophets for his foundation. Now he's using you. Fitting you in brick by brick, stone by stone, with Christ Jesus as the cornerstone that holds all the parts together. In other words, we see it. We see it taking shape day after day. A holy temple built by God. All of us built into it. A temple in which God is quite at home. It's the story of the three masons. There's three masons, and they're all working on the same project. And the person walks up to the first mason, and they're laying bricks. And they go, hey, what are you doing? And he goes, I'm laying bricks. 
He goes up the second base. He goes, hey, what are you doing? He goes, oh, I'm building a wall. He goes to the third base and he says, what are you doing? He goes, I'm building the greatest cathedral that's ever been built. Same job, same things, different vision. You hear what I'm saying to you? But that's legacy. That's what it means to live legacy is that you have faith and we see the second thing, we take sacrifice. In order to do anything significant, you have to lay something down. Right? In order to do anything significant, you have to lay something down. We have to lay down personal agendas and convenience. Come on, y'all. We have to lay down personal agendas and convenience. I said this to one of our ladies who were standing up here talking today. I mean, did some new things with the lights tonight. They were trying to stuff. It was pretty cool. I think there's some stuff to tweet. But it was, it was cool. But when I first came in, can you know, I be honest with you guys? I came in to have a meeting with the, t- the team beforehand, and I pulled out the piece of paper of that email that I read to you earlier, and I couldn't read it. I had to do the whole turn on your light thing. Come on, old people. Come on. I'm going to be first second. Come on. Right? And I laughed because I'm like, okay, well, here I am. I'm in, that, I'm, a, I'm in that category. And I was like, well, can y'all turn these lights on and keep doing this? And I started adjusting and they were like, well, what's not? If we do that, it's going to take this away. And I'm like, you know what? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Y'all did it. Let's do it the way you did it this morning. Here's my point. Put down our agenda. Put down our like, media. Why? Because there was a n- next generation behind me that was trying to take some leadership and trying to do some stuff. Can we let them do some stuff? Can we let them do some stuff if it's uncomfortable for us? Can we let them do it? Can we let them do it in a way that's going to attract others of them because we're trying to reach those who are far from God? Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? We're going to have to put down our agendas and our convenience. And so we choose it. We choose it. First Peter 2 and 5. You also, like living stones, are being built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood. How do you do it? How do you become a holy priesthood? By offering spiritual sacrifices. By offering spiritual sacrifices. So I'm laughing. I'm talking to Miss Marlene, and I told her I couldn't even see this morning. I felt like the old guy. And Miss Marlene looked at me like, oh, yeah, you're the old guy. You know, she's kind of mugging me. And, 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 but but I, I, I thought to this, and I thought, you know, the sacrifice. And I looked at her, and I said, you know, Miss Marlene, we're just, we're, 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 this is the struggle. This is the juggle of what it means to be a church. Because you've got to be old and young, and we've got different styles, and we've got different ways of doing this. But when the old and the young and, the, and everybody in between gets to a point where we go, I just come and serve, the church becomes powerful. You, you know what I'm saying to you? Like we all have our preferences, we all have our ways and, and our thoughts, but offering spiritual sacrifices is acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. I have to continually choose to interrupt my agenda to serve. How many of you know? Opportunities to serve people never come at the right time. Come on. Nobody ever walks up to you and you think he goes, Hey, I really need some help. Can you help me right now? And you're like, I've got like three hours. Why don't I ask you for sure? I'll get out here. But we're going to have to continually interrupt our lives and our agendas to serve, sacrifice my ideas for God's ideas, and focus on others. It's the story of the Good Samaritan. You know the story. Guy falls, he gets beat up, all this sort of stuff. Here comes a priest, I don't want to do that, I ain't got time for that. Here comes another holy guy, I ain't got time to do that. And here comes somebody of a different race. They, they do not like each other, racially speaking. And he stops and he serves the other person. Dr. Martin Luther King preaches this, this amazing sermon on the Good Samaritan. And when he preaches the message, he says this. We've got two choices of what we can ask ourselves in a moment like that. The first question is, is if I help this person, what's going to happen to me? The second question is, if I don't help this person, what's going to happen to them? Hear the difference? Legacy members, people who live legacy, don't ask the question of what's going to happen to me. They ask the question of what's going to happen to them if I don't do, if I don't get involved, if I don't get my hands dirty in this process. To live a legacy life number three, it takes generosity. So we give it. Right? I don't have to sell this to you. You ready for this? When I was crunching all these numbers and we were prepping all this stuff for you, I learned something about you that amazed me about you. I looked up the national average for giving every week. 
per person. Okay? National average, giving in churches per person each week. Then I took your giving from the last three to six months, I think it was six months. And we just took total attendance, including children. So a lot of us don't give, a lot of some people don't give because it's their first time here. Totally cool. We're cool with that. But we divided that number, so it was, you know, including children. Do you know that you give 20 times the national average? That's miraculous, church. That's a move, that's a move of God. No one's a body. That's bigger than any one of us. I think it's something God is doing to say we'll be a part, right? It takes generosity. Psalm 112, they share freely and give generously to those in need. Their good deeds will be remembered forever. They will have influence and honor. Come on now. I have influence and honor. That's power. We're only the opportunity to touch somebody this season. Grab some cards and touch somebody this season. You never know how seven dollars in a drive drive through. I heard a story of somebody who paid for somebody in a drive through, gave the card, drove on, they gave the card. That lady was at a new church. She wrote that church and said, Here's the license plate number of the car. She wrote it down. And she said she said, What what this person doesn't know is I was going home with the plan to commit suicide. Her seven dollars saved my life. You never know. Listen, you never know. You never know when you get outside of your agenda and you do the simple stuff. Number four, it takes urgency. Right? We do it today. Today matters. Most of us, you know what I think our struggle is, and this is Mike too. We so over-exaggerate yesterday that we underestimate today. Say that again. We so over-exaggerate the things we did wrong and the things that are jacked up in our lives that we underestimate the potential and the power of today. That's what I say. The gentleman that I read his email earlier, I had a chance to talk to him on the phone. He said, Pastor, I don't know what to do. I just think it's dark. I said, Brother, I have been there where it just, you felt like there's no way out. Just that depression, just, come on, some of y'all have been there. And, 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 and I said to him, I said, listen, 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 listen. Above and beyond your feelings, can I encourage you to do something really, really small? I said, you're working, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. When you go to work, just to do some simple little small things for some other people at work. Like finish your work and help with theirs. Or if there's some lady and you, you know, you, you've heard her talk about Dunkin' Donuts, stop at Dunkin' Donuts and bring her something. Like, do some silly little things. And I said, here's why I want you to encourage you to do that. Because when you do something above and beyond outside of your problems, above and beyond your feelings, you will feel that blessing. Are you hearing me? You don't lose the urgency of this day. Because God has called you to do something today. Ephesians 5 and 15, be very careful that how you live. Not as unwise, but as wise. Making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. And what we see around us is crazy. Would you not agree? But you are ambassadors of Christ. You are called to make a difference. It did not have to be huge. It could be seven dollars on a drive through Come on, somebody. It could be a handshake. It can be some. Listen to me. On your way out today, say to somebody here my favorite thing for somebody to say to me. You ready? You look like you lost some weight. Right? Come on, somebody. Come on, and then jump on to the buffet. You do it, brother. Let's just do it. Now listen to me. See, can you see the joy right now? Just, just the laughter right now. We catch people if we would begin to focus on. We have such an opportunity. Come on, church, to leave a legacy. That we'll get to one day just stand and have a cheer along with the angels. As those that come, that, that we thought there was no way they would ever come to this place to know God. I'll leave you one, one last thought. Live today. Or let me say it this way today. I will live as this as if this is the day that will be remembered. What if today was the only day everybody was going to talk about at your funeral? 
We did, we did a funeral just recently, and they were talking about things, and I thought, well, if you want to get up in the morning and say that today, maybe write that down, take that off the notes, put it on your mirror today. Live, live as if this is the day that will be remembered. I promise you things will change. I promise you your priorities will change. I promise you you'll start to see that God wants to use you in a way that you never even thought or imagined. Let me pray for you this morning. Father God, thank you for stirring our hearts today. We do, God. We want to be a part of your plan. We want to make a difference. Probably some of us here this morning that may have a hard time picturing us making a difference. And I'm asking Holy Spirit, would you meet them in that place to encourage them today? That you have a purpose and a meaning and a destiny for their life. Now for those of us that life has worn us down a little bit, that we've kind of forgotten stir back up inside of us a vision beyond what we see right now with the natural stir back up in us something eternal a vision that you have God for our community, for our family for, for, for our particular neighborhood for our school of a student our workplace God what do you see in those places how do you see those things going if I today choose to be a part of your plan, give us vision, God, that we might be living legacies in the spheres of influence where you have placed us. We ask it in Jesus' name. All God's people say it. Amen. Amen. In just a moment, the team's going to worship us out. You are welcome to go. Uh, you're dismissed as they start to worship. But I encourage you to stand a few minutes. I always ask if you've got a couple minutes. Ponder what God said to you today. Stay and sing for just a moment and think about what it is. Don't just rush out. Maybe take a couple moments and say, well, what's my next step based on what the Holy Spirit said today? What is my next step? And let me come up with a plan so when I walk out to the car, I have some kind of a plan to put into motion what he said to me today. Amen? So stand your feet. Let's worship our way out. And uh, love you guys. We'll see you next week.